Okay, good. So we're solving three by three systems of linear equations. And to begin with, it's just going to be algebra that we're processing. But what it leads up to in 6K is that it all has very important meaning for what's this? This is the equation of a plane, the equation of a plane, and the equation of a plane. In fact, solutions to these systems are going to describe how three planes interact with one another. So this is a very important skill for us. We'll get straight into it. The first thing we have to do, like we've when we have two systems, is we have to describe it in what we call row echelon form, which is where we just abstract from that the numbers. Okay, we're not interested in the x and the y, we put it as a matrix. And in the first row we have one, one, minus one. We draw a line, we've got five. We'll have two, one, three, and two, four, minus one, two, and one. Okay, so this is this system of equations stated in what we call row echelon form, where we've abstracted from it just the coefficients of each variable. Okay, now basically we're trying to manipulate the system so that it looks like this. We have some numbers here. Uh, I'm just going to put A, B, C, D. We have a zero here, E, F, G, and then we have two zeros here, H, I. All right. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to break the system down so that we have two zeros here, so we can have a solution for z. We're going to have z equals some number. Um, and then if we've solved z, we can plug z into this equation, which gives us y. All right, so we're trying to set it up like that. So that means the first thing I'm trying to do is put a zero here, always here to begin. All right, so we have to do some row operation. We're going to replace this row with some um, form of uh, substitution. So what, what the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to replace row three with, okay? And there's, like I can see two very obvious ways that we can do this. The first one being two lots of row two take away row three, okay? If I have two lots of row two, that's going to give me two times two here, which is four, and then four take away four, would give me that zero in that position. Okay, two lots of row two, take away row three, I can have four take away four. Another way it could be written, four lots of row one, take away row three. Doesn't matter which one you do, as long as we're obtaining that zero. So now that we've stated this is our operation, let's restate the matrix in row echelon form. So these top rows stay the same, they're not changing. Row two is not changing. You can do multiple row operations at one stage if you want to, but I don't recommend it, it's easy to get confused. Okay, so now we're replacing row three with this operation. Two lots of row two take away row one, that row three. So two times two is four, four take four is zero. That's what we were trying to do. All right, here, two times one is two. Two take away minus one is three. All right, two times three is six, and six take away two is four. Two times two is four, and four take away one is three. Okay, so this is the matrix that we arrive at from the first operation. Okay, now we want to get a zero here but we're not going to do that yet because if we try and get a zero here, like if I were to do the second row take away this row in, you know, three lots of that take away this one, I'm going to then end up with a number here. And we don't want a number here, we're trying to keep that as zero. So, the first, so step one, get a zero in this location. Step two is get a zero in this location. Once we have a zero in both of these, then we can perform an operation involving those. So now let's replace row two Okay, we're going to replace this row with, all right, two lots of row one, take away row two. Okay, what are we going to be left with? The top row stays the same. All right, now two times one is two, take away two is zero. That's giving me the zero there. All right, two times one is two, take away one is one. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, minus 2 take away 3, minus 5. 2 times 5 is 10, take 2 is 8, and then we have this row, 0, 3, 4, 3. 
Okay, good. Now we just have one more operation to do to break it down to row echelon four, which is to three lots of row two, take away, we're going to replace row three, three lots of row two, take away row three. All right, so three times zero, take away zero, that's still going to stay as zero, that's beautiful. And then here we can have the three times one is three, three take away three is zero. All right, so let's take what we've got. The top is staying the same, one, one, minus one, five. Need a different color for this. Zero, one, minus five. Eight, zero, three, four, three. Ah, sorry, this is the row we're replacing. All right. So, what have we said? Three lots of row two. So three times one, take away three. Zero there. Three times minus five, minus fifteen. Take away four, minus nineteen. 3 times 8, 24, take away 3, 21. Okay. So now, if we're solving this system of equations, we want to know what are the values of x, y, and z. So I'm just going to state it back in terms of x. Y and Z. In our first row, we have X plus Y take Z equals 5. In our second row, we have Y take 5Z equals 8. And in our last row, we have minus 19Z equals 21. Okay, we can now solve this system of equations for X, Y and Z exactly. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by uh, minus 19 for this equation. If I have minus 19z equals 21, then z is 21 on 19, the negative of it. Okay, we can then solve for y. Well, y is going to equal 8 plus 5 lots of z. Okay, we've got the z value, so y is going to be 8 plus 5 lots of minus 21 on 19. I'm definitely using my calculator to the above doing that. 8 plus 8 take 5 times 21 on 19. And we've got 47 on 19. So we've got our z, we've got our y, and so we're just working back. We've got z, we've got y, and now we can find x. So I have x is equal to 5 take away y plus z. So I have 5, take 47 on 19, 19, plus uh, take 21 on 19. We've got 27 on 19. Okay, so we've found the exact solution to these systems of equations. Alright, so we've solved the 3x3 three three system. The solution to the 3x3 three three system is when x is 27 on 19, y is 47 on 19, and z is negative 21 on 19. Good. Okay, that's the first one. We will go through the second one because I'm anticipating it's a little bit different. And so what we found there is what we call an exact solution. So this new one we've got then is 2, 3, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 2, 2 minus 2, 2 and minus 4. Good. Okay. Can anyone see a relationship between any of the planes here? From the second line to the third line is just doubled. Excellent. Okay. These planes are parallel. They're the equation of the same plane, and they're parallel because they have the same direction, right? But we're also going to find out that they're not only are they parallel, but they're coincident. In fact, they describe the equation of the same plane because the constant is even a multiple as well. 
And here's how we're going to observe that. When we try and figure out, uh, when, when we try to put a zero here, in row three, we're going to go two lots of row two, take away row three. Okay, we get two lots of row two, take away row three. So the top stays the same, the middle row stays the same. And now when we process this third row, we're going to have two take two, zero. Minus two take away minus two, zero. Two take away two, zero. Minus four take away minus four, zero. The whole bottom row goes to zero. And so that tells you these are the equation of the same plane. All right, they're coincident. They're existing in the same space. You need two sheets of paper existing in the same plane. Okay, so that's good so far. We're still gonna obtain a solution to these though. We're still gonna obtain a solution. All right, so clear that out. So ideally, this is what we're looking for. We've already got zeros in these positions, so that means I need to get a zero in this position. All right, we're looking to get a zero here, and so that's quite easy. We're just gonna replace row two with row one, take away two lots of row two. All right, two, take away two. So the top row stays the same. And now I have two, take away two, zero. Three, take away minus two would be positive five. 1 take away 2 will be minus 1, and 1 take away minus 4 will be positive 5. We've got all those zeros in the bottom row. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump back up here and describe the system in terms of its variables again. 2x plus 3y plus z is 1, and 5x, sorry, 5y takes z is minus five. So here is how we find a solution. <laughs> you might think this is not quite funny. Let z equal t. Why is it funny? Because we're just replacing one parameter with another, right? Um, but this is useful because z is a Dimension, T is a direction, a parameter for a direction. So if we have Z equals T, all right, we're going to define Z as T, then 5Y take away T is equal to minus 5. I'm plugging it into this equation. Now we can solve the proof for Y in terms of T. So we'll have 5Y equals minus 5 plus T. And then we'll divide both sides by 5. We'll have y equals minus 1 plus t on 5. Shouldn't that be positive 5 instead of negative 5 at the end of that? Yeah, good pickup. So that's positive, that's positive, that's positive. Thank you. Okay, so what have we done? We've defined z as t, and then we solve this equation for y, where z is t. Okay, now we can solve for x. We have two lots of x plus three lots of y plus one lot of z is equal to one. And so we'll just solve that through for x. Chuck everything else on the other side. So I'm going to have two x plus three plus three t on five plus t equals one. Um, so we'll have two x is equal to so I'm going to move that over. 1 take away 3 will be minus 2. And here I have 8 on 5t is positive. When I move it over, it becomes negative 8 on 5t. And then we'll divide both sides by 2. We'll get minus 1 take 8 on 10t. Okay, so we found the solution. And isn't that interesting, okay? Because the first system we know had exact values, x, y, and z, okay? So we can start to anticipate planes intersecting at a x, y, and z value. That's a point in space. Um, here, what have we found? Z is t, we've got one plus t on five, and one take a t. This is the equation of a, line, alright, uh, 
and so we can start to anticipate solutions to intersecting planes. Okay, nonetheless, let's get straight into a couple of these questions for you guys. So um, to begin with, we'll just go over a few so that we can have a look, start to have a look at K. So, chapter six, where I, so we'll just get you to do one of each, eh? Let's do question 1A, <coughs> so 6I, 1A, 2A, and then 6J, 1A, 1C, for now. 